Good morning and welcome to the webinar the on Digital Next in Insurance. We'll be focusing on customer onboarding today. The insurance industry globally, as we know it, has undergone a lot of unprecedented changes. The world is changing and the people worried are uh, worried that what would happen and this kind of is creating a lot of ruckus in the field of uh, life and medical insurance as such. The new normal brings about new changes, new insecurities at hand, and people are rushing to get the policies in life and health sorted. You'd see most of the places, you'd notice that there are increased number of customer queries when it comes to adding uh, riders to the existing policy, verifying whether COVID is covered or not, and things like that. In fact, a lot of rush is there in today's times to get new policies in these domains. This leads to additional pressures on the insurance companies, which basically are already grappling for times because of uh, partly of operational offices. We are privileged to have today with us Mr. Sachin Seth, Partner Financial Services at EY and Mr. Shantanu Tiwari, Head of Center of Excellence for Insurance within NewGen. My name is Ritesh and I would be your host for today. I head the insurance, I head the consulting practice for NewGen. With a combined knowledge of more than 70 years amongst the three of us, we would be discussing on upcoming trends, technologies and objectives in the insurance sector in the APAC markets. We would cover what is the current trends, regulatory changes that are happening today, and technologies to address the plethora of changes that are being seen by the insurance industry today. Without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Sachin to share his views. Over to you, Sachin. Thank you. Thank you, Ritesh. Thank you so much. And uh, very good morning to all of you across Asia and Pacific region. Uh, as Ritesh mentioned, my name is Sachin Seth. I lead the digital and fintech practice in EY. And uh, I'll be talking about uh, a couple of things uh, to share with you in terms of what's happening in the insurance market, how digital is being adopted and what's the role of digital onboarding in the current uh, situation, right? So, uh, uh, Shantanu, requesting you to uh, move to the next slide. Thank you. Yeah, so as I think Ritesh briefly uh, touched uh, about the current pandemic situation, which all of us have been facing for last about four and a half months. And uh, I mean, it doesn't look like that's going to end so soon. So the whole uh, dimension of business has changed. And I think insurance is one of the most highly impacted industry. One side, if you see, there are a lot of business challenges which have come uh, in the front, which is around liquidity, uh, because there are redemptions are going to be there. I mean, people are taking loans against policies because they have had job losses or people uh, there are casualties in terms of people losing life because of COVID-19. So there would be claims against that. At the same time, there are more risks uh, related to cyber, etc., because employees are working remotely. So the systems are not designed to basically work across the board uh, from remote locations. Uh, from claims and services perspective also, traditionally insurance companies have had a, uh, you know, more of a hybrid models wherein there have been a digital servicing, but there is a lot more servicing supported through call centers, through branches, through brokers, agents, etc. So insurance industry has typically operates with a large feet on the street uh, in the ground, which includes basically all the channels. So today, because of social distancing, obviously those channels are not as effective as uh, you know they were in the past. And I think every country is having a different strategy to uh, 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 lock down or, or basically manage the situation of social distancing. So there are different kind of challenges every geography is facing. Right on the sales side, uh, there has been mixed bag. So obviously on the health insurance side, some countries have reported that there has been an increase because people are more aware of their health uh, uh, security or the concerns and people are, really, are keen to basically protect their family or the expenses in case they have, uh, they catch the infectious virus or otherwise uh, any health problem. Uh, so they are more keen, but at the same time, if you see on certain areas, 
which were the products which are for retirement products, long long term products, endowment products, etc. There has been a bit sluggish sales because they require a lot more illustration to client about the product. They require a lot more personalization, for, you know, connect with the client. So naturally, there is a decline there because it's not a top priority for a customer to think about retirement today. It's the priority is to think about the health today and basically the today's need, right? Uh, also, uh, uh, renewals and collections have been impacted. In fact, some of the geographies I looked at in the report yesterday, the first quarter, uh, basically, so 13th month uh, persistency, which is considered as one of the key benchmark in the industry to look at the quality of the portfolio and basically the efficiency of the renewals. Uh, we have started seeing some drop in the 13 month uh, you know, persistency. So it means that people who had taken a policy 12 months back, now the renewal is coming and there is a delay happening in the renewal or there may be a decline also happening in the renewals, right? So those are some of the challenges which insurance companies are facing. And obviously, I think the biggest of them uh, all is basically how do they engage with customers? Because traditionally, in insurance has been heavy uh, on push kind of models wherein there has been a lot of relationship, a lot of explanation, a lot of uh, regulatory mechanism to basically onboard the customer, which requires customer engagement physically. And I think that that's the biggest challenge I think most of us are uh, facing in the insurance industry. And we'll be talking quickly about that, that how do we overcome those challenges? Yeah. yeah. So Shantanu, I request you to move to the next slide. Yeah, so if you look at it, uh, what if, I mean, if you look at the different components of the challenge, what we are facing and how do we overcome those challenges, especially using the digital tech, right? So product uh, customer engagements and the product distribution. Now the good part is that or silver lining is that the insurance company has been spending billions of dollars to move to digital for last about 10 years or so. In fact, most of the countries, the sale of insurance digitally uh, without any assisted channel has been less than 10% or it's a single digit. Uh, wherein a lot of money has been spent. Most of the companies do have digital channels set up, digital products created, but it was not adopted as much as it is being adopted now. So there is definitely a, a great deal of uh, increase happening in terms of the digital channels uh, purchases, but definitely the overall business is on decline. So it's, it's a bit of a uh, catch-22 situation for the insurance across the board. Right. Second is that there's an unparalleled load on the different channels. So if you had designed your website, your mobile channel or your call center for any certain kind of load and the branches were handling certain kind of load or Banka was handling certain kind of load, today the more load has shifted to the digital side of it. So the balancing of load becomes a, another key point here, which is from customer service and claims perspective and onboarding perspective. There are operational challenges as well because obviously uh, the distribution of the manpower across the board is gone for a bit of a realignment and uh, that's becoming a bit of challenge process and technology point of view also see traditionally we have been uh, used to projects which run in let's say 90 days 180 days kind of model but now the time has come that project should be running in a week or two or three or four because the way what is changing uh, the kind of uh, you know uh, speed required is basically to be able to meet the requirement of connecting with any broker connecting with any channel partner connecting with any bank much faster than what it was traditionally, right? We don't have the luxury of taking two months, three months to do that, right? The regulatory compliance point of view also, I think most of the countries have taken a note of it. Uh, many countries have allowed sandboxes to be set up and uh, basically create new sachet products. Uh, in some countries, obviously the KYC guidelines also have been relaxed, uh, but it also comes with certain caution factor because insurance is one of the biggest fraud industry which is impacted by the fraud. So it's very important that digital adoption happens not only for the sake of inconvenience, it also is for the protection of the basically the business, uh, which is the key part of it, right? Which means we should not be onboarding a wrong customer or we should not be dealing with the wrong broker or channel partner if we are doing digitally because personal touch is not there. So we may not be able to just make judgments as much as we could have made in the physical environment. So there's a lot of dependence on technology to make the right judgment about the KYC, about fraud detections, etc. So systems are take over the job which people used to be doing a lot more. And that's the regulatory compliance part becomes very, very relevant. Security also, as I mentioned, I, mean, I covered in my previous point. So rapid transition happening to remote working and customers are also comfortable with that. But at the same time, it comes with its own challenges. So we need to take care of. So these are the five, I would say, underlying factors which are driving basically insurers to move to digital onboarding model or digital claims, digital servicing, digital onboarding model. And these are the ones which are each one of them is getting impacted in different ways. Yeah. 
Chandra Hills. So, what do we, uh, what what does it give us an opportunity, right? Now, it gives us a great opportunity to see, first of all, how do we manage the customer onboarding and sales process? And let me give you, there's a big silver lining here again also. See, the cost of acquisition and insurance has been very high. In fact, whether it's a commission straight to the channel brokers, channel partners, or the salespeople, and I'm not saying that we don't need to have the same mechanism. I think every country has its own success formula. But what I'm proposing here is that we should have use of a lot more digital so that with the same capacity of people, we should be able to generate more business and with the much better customer experience. Now, given within the regulatory framework, I would say. So if you look at it from onboarding process, proposal part itself is very crucial in insurance, especially where the, there's an investment component involved. There are a lot of regulatory controls there. So the proposal, how do we share the proposal with the or illustration with the customer that's important, how the calculations are done. Uh, collection of documents digitally is also important because of social distancing anyway people don't want to touch each other's papers people don't people want to maintain a distance it's not easy to go to a customer's home today and pick up a few documents which used to be the normal case so that becomes another area but the biggest problem we face in digital document collection is that the size the the the, 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 the file size the clarity of the documents or basically ability to read the document electronically is another key problem because every document comes with its own uh, way you know every customer has a document in a different format sometimes right so then comes basically form filling now i think most of the problems in the insurance industry have been faced because of data because when the renewal time comes you find that broker has not fulfilled all the uh, you know details and you face a lot of problems in future uh, because of non-contactability to customer, not knowing who is the nominee or where contact details are wrong, etc. I think using digital, uh, again, uh, with OCR, ICR, extraction of data helps not only reduce the cycle time, it also improves significantly quality of data, which is very much useful to you in case of any claim or which is, or in case of any, uh, you know, contactability required for the uh, renewals of the insurance, right? E sign of document again uh, some countries have taken a big steps on this uh, uh, most of the companies the countries are moving towards this it could be done using you know various kind of methods otp sign is also in some countries is working and uh, there are other ways to basically validate customer signatures so that's another key point uh, kyc is the key part which is i think we can discuss a lot more in depth today that video kyc is becoming very relevant but i have seen that in some countries people are doing video kyc in a, in a very simplistic manner, which is fine, but the problem with video KYC is that if you are not following certain norms, which is facial recognition, which is basically looking at the liveliness of the person, the voice biometric kind of stuff, or if you are not looking at basically the lat long, which is like a you know geolocation, there is a you know there could be a huge uh, problems of the fraud as well, because as I said, insurance is a very fraud prone industry. Uh, the, the physical meeting also there are frauds happened so you can imagine that in the digital the fraud could be even more so i think the technology has to be used in a right way to be able to you know maximize the gains but at the same time one has to protect the business because digital kyc is an is a area wherein it does require quite a bit of technology to come together and not just a video uh, recording is good enough it, it, it needs a lot more than that actually to make it effective and fraud risk right and obviously, policy issuance is another key area wherein physical policy dispatches may be difficult in certain countries today, and it may continue for another six months. So, how do you electronically generate the policy, dispatch it digitally, accept by the customer, etc.? Yeah, Shantu, thank you. Next slide, Shantu. Yeah. So, with this, you know, just uh, summarizing that what are the key benefits of digital onboarding? Uh, first of all, your capacity of sales. Today is restricted by amount of documents can be collected, forms can be uh, filled by customers, etc. That becomes much more effective. Capacity gets increased. It could be not only 100% digital; it could be even assisted digital. So even a salesperson can uh, do the you know co-browsing, or there could be a call center you know who uh, could talk to customer and give a link to provide you know inputs in the detail and upload it, etc. So it need not be only 100% self done by self uh, you know. Uh, input by the customer it could be a co uh, input also or assisted input also uh, onboarding time goes down uh, documents uh, you are able to capture the right data it has a huge cost saving and efficiencies you can scale up a lot more compared to in a physical model uh, it also reduces kyc diligence time because a lot of diligence are happening online while the onboarding is happening and basically it's also 
cost saving because of failed client acquisitions. You know, you are not spending time enough. So if client does not pay up later on, if client does not get onboarded or medical test does not pass, still you have not spent a lot of money in acquiring the client and you are able to, you know, keep it in a minimal uh, listing. But customers obviously is also good because social distancing point of view, customers are uh, able to basically, uh, uh, you know, do it much faster. It's a much faster, better experience for them. Uh, it is much more authentic. They also get almost recorded everything. So tomorrow, if KYC or anything is to be checked, there is a recording available with the let long with the so customer can prove that it was the same customer. Uh, it is not dependent on the broker or the channel partner to basically demonstrate that, right? So and then obviously there is a lot of service which can be added by chatbots, by other intelligent uh, tools, etc. Yeah, Shantanu, please. Yeah. So with this, uh, uh, just summarizing my point on this and handing over to Shantanu. So if you look at it, uh, key areas we should be looking at. Uh, not only now, post pandemic also revival. So if we say that revival will happen in the next couple of months, naturally the, we are not going to go to the same normal world and the customer experience has changed, customer preferences have changed. So what we should also be looking at their ups, you know, one is the building a contactless sales kind of model with digital onboarding coupled along with that, looking at agency upskilling, because agency is a big, big game, big, big, big part of the whole onboarding process. So how do we upskill them in this period of uh, lockdown or in the period of basically pandemic, which is going on? Omnichannel experience, how do we do that? Not only basically the sales, how do the servicing of policies come integrated along with that? And looking at basically automating the process workflows because it's not possible for people to move around the files or go to each other's desk and discuss. Uh, it's everything has to happen electronically, so better it is done in a, in a much more uh, structured manner, including underwriting and uh, approvals, etc. And also basically the cloud-based models, uh, scalability, uh, which can be done. And partnerships are going to be the way for future. Rather than being a dedicated channel partners or the brokers, it is a partnership which will drive. So look at more models wherein you are aligning with e-commerce, you are aligning with auto companies, you are aligning with uh, you know hospitals or other places wherein you are able to engage with them and attach the product to insurance and have the joint onboarding because that will save the time as well as that will give you additional revenue. Yeah. So with this, uh, we'll be handing over to Shantanu, the COE lead for uh, NewGen, and uh, for his point of views on the solutions specifically. And I'll be available to address any questions uh, along with Shantanu and uh, Ritesh going forward. Thank you, Ritesh. Uh, Shantanu, handing over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sachin. I think that was really insightful. Uh, as rightly mentioned by Sachin, I think what is most critical was insurance industry was till now very very touch oriented so everything that was to be done was that you walk up to a agent you walk up to a branch they get things sorted for you and it works however in today's times handling paper itself becomes a taboo so while the regulatory changes in terms of the video kyc a kyc and other things change what is most critical is to look at the post pandemic era which will be to manage the entire journey and not just a part of the journey. So with this, I would suggest uh, Shantanu to take over and help us explain what technologies are present to address the journey perspective. Sure, over to sure. you, Shantanu. Sure. Thanks, Pratish, and uh, thanks, Sachin, for such an insightful initial uh, set of slides for giving an entire background on uh, what is the requirement in the coming future. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, based on your time zones, uh, uh, I am Shantanu, and I'll be uh, taking you uh, now to uh, the solution that Newgen offers and how it would typically help achieve the objective which Sachin and Ritesh have been emphasizing upon, which is you know, to transform the entire customer onboarding uh, journey for the customer. So uh, if you look at what has been obviously in the news uh, off late and, and, and this sort of resonates with what uh, Sachin uh, was uh, mentioning in his slides, which is, you know, um, obviously with, with the COVID-19 situation, um, companies are now trying to look at transforming the way they have been onboarding customers. So while this might be uh, something which is an immediate uh, need because of the current uh, situation, but then, you know, this also gives an opportunity to the insurer to sort of streamline or probably remove certain bottlenecks that has been around in the customer onboarding journey, uh, you know, since uh, some time now. And, and, and this is now actually 
effort of laying the foundation of making the entire journey much more uh, smoothless even post the the covid-19 situation that is obviously going to be the the new normal uh, for a foreseeable future now so you know if we look at uh, the challenges obviously this is something which uh, sachin has emphasized a lot in detail but then you know uh, not just for agents but for any uh, sales channel that is the uh, you know for an insurance companies i mean uh, the current situation uh, has actually resulted in a drop in sales obviously because especially when it comes to life insurance uh, you know which which sachin was also emphasizing it's it's so much touch dependent and you know people obviously not just the people even the insurance companies rely so much on the agents visiting uh, the customers and explaining to them the plans uh, you know to be to be more uh, in person interaction specific now this is something which has taken a real hit now which because of which you know uh, there is a decrease sales and you know probably people are not able to understand what they have to buy even though you know the current situation is actually uh, having a lot of opportunities to increase sales but then the lack of such measures are actually you know uh, sort of impacting the growth which should have actually happened in the current uh, scenario especially for life and uh, and health insurance policies and obviously you know there are certain traditional problems as well which even before uh, the covid 19 situation was there that was there with with, with regards to you know a high policy issues time so this is something which is uh, in turn especially when it comes to short term insurance like medical insurance now this is this is a very critical factor because this is something which drives the the the, the renewal uh, you know uh, possibility of any customer you know especially uh, uh, then you have premium payment collection especially for your uh, you know periodic payments how do you make the entire collection process much more smoothless uh, much more smooth much more seamless the customer experience uh, you know in insurance uh, uh, you know uh, unfortunately has never been uh, you know uh, very great especially because of the lack of focus on online which was there earlier and and this is now what is actually you know uh, something which the insurance companies are looking at so that's what i said that you know probably the covid 19 situation would have been uh, uh, you know something uh, which is temporary but then this is actually resulting in the insurance companies to sort of uh, overlook their entire model and see that you know uh, how do they transform this journey not just for the near future but also in a long term foreseeable future now now if we look at some of the numbers and this is this is where the actual you know <clears throat> um, uh, a fact comes that if we look at the preference of customers i mean customers you know even before covid 19 was there they have been looking a lot into digital i mean uh, if you look at their inquiries if they look at you know what are the current products which are there in the market if you look at it you know uh, not just the, the the millennials or the new generation but even people who are now tech savvy they they're always on the website of of the insurance companies or on the website of aggregators to see what are the different type of products what are the benefits that are offered so it's like you know from a customer standpoint there has always been some sort of a preference uh, in, in going digital so if, if in fact if you look at the study report it says that 70 per, 71% of consumers actually surveyed the product before they bought it so even though the actual sell or the actual sale would have happened uh, you know in a face to face interaction but then people have been researching a lot digitally and and they are aware when the, the agent comes to them they know that what are the different type of products what are the different type of benefits which are there which actually means that the propensity to go digital is is quite high for the consumers but then if you actually look at it only around 26% of it uh, of, of this uh, you know online inquiry get transformed into the actual check sale which basically means that even though people are inquiring digitally so much but then eventually a lot of them are not buying digital now what what's the problem i mean what what's what's the uh, why is this difference now this difference is exactly because of the fact that you know uh, the, the the experience or the onboarding journey especially digitally is not as seamless as it would have been you know probably because you know even if somebody fills up uh, the form online you know and if they get stuck somewhere they don't really know what to do so in all probability they will abandon the journey and then probably call up the agent and ask that what what has to be done or probably you know they will ask uh, to visit him and, and get the journey uh, started all over again you know the customer experience is is has not really been all that great you know not just in covid but even prior to that you know in terms of uh, you know having tools available online or through you know uh, calls which can actually enable this journey or make this journey much more smooth for the customer so that is where you know uh, you know even though the customer wants to go digital but then you know i would put it this way that they they do not have enough tools or enough you know facilities online 
actually complete the journey and that is where this fall actually happens and which, which actually results in a lot of dependence on people based selling so you know how it should actually be working like so obviously one of the key objectives would be to you know keep it short and simple which is the kiss uh, phenomena so how do we make this entire journey much more smooth much more shorter because typically if you look at the entire onboarding journey it it takes a lot of time so that is where the customer interest also drops so you know probability probably they may even say in between the process also that they may want to pull out and and ask for cancellation because of you know the huge amount of time that actually takes in in getting the policy issue so that is where you know the entire process not just from getting the customer filling up the data but even in terms of actually getting the policy issued having the underwriting should be much more uh, seamless and much more smooth so uh, that is where you know when when we look at the customer onboarding journey we don't look at it just at the point of sale it is you know the entire uh, journey of issuance and and you know the the fulfillment that that should be much more faster now how how it should be done and obviously what are the tools uh, which are available so obviously technology has a big role to play in it in terms of you know making this entire journey much more uh, fast and that is where you know organizations like newgen uh, comes into picture and that is what we have been trying to do uh, in in terms of enabling our customer uh, have this journey uh, or or probably make their uh, customer onboarding journeys much more faster and that is where the the newgen's platform on low code is basically helping most of our insurance uh, partners now what it actually means it actually means that uh, you know it's not just having a portal or having a mobile app in place i mean obviously that is the need of the hour but then it is something which needs to be developed and deployed very fast in a very low amount of time it should be capable of you know uh, or flexible enough to be incorporating changes very soon because you know there there would be norms that would be because you know even for the regulators there is something which is still evolving when I mean, they are also trying to get more policies and one more compliances in place even insurance companies are uh, putting in more compliances to ensure that the fraud level should be low the security should be high and that is where the capability of the tool to not just go live but be flexible enough to accommodate or to make these changes going for, uh, forward you know in 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 a much less amount of time becomes very critical and that is where the low code platform actually comes into picture and this is what you know nigen has been proposing to its uh, uh, you know uh, customers so this is something which which is actually enabling or transforming the end to end journey of customer onboarding with minimal amount of of uh, you know um, hard coding as we call it required or or the focus is more on configurations wherein they can actually get the solution up and running in a very less amount of time and also you know give them the flexibility of adapting it uh, to a specific geography or probably to to the continuous regulatory compliance in, in 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 a much faster way and one of the key aspects here is what we call it as you know uh, helping the organizations to achieve closed loop automation so as i said uh, the focus is not just on a customer filling up a form but also how do you you know sort of streamline the further process of it how do you ensure that the customer is fully involved in his journey you know he is he is well aware of what is uh, the status of his policy you know probably if there is a need of of a medical that needs to be done how do we make it much more smoothless how do we ensure that the medical data comes back to the underwriter in a form that is much more digital it can be evaluated much faster and the entire process issuance is much faster so this is where you know uh, technologies like newgens are actually helping insurance companies achieve this objective so i'll just quickly run through what this uh, low code platform is all about i mean obviously it includes a lot of components uh, which actually is helping uh, insurers get this platform up and running obviously you know as i said it gives you flexibility to configure most of the things which helps in reducing the time of actually uh, making changes uh, you have uh, facilities like a, like a form builder or a, or a interface builder wherein you can quickly customize the forms customize the interface make them much more and each of the interfaces in the application would have a different relevance probably if i have to develop it for a customer i would want to make it you know in a manner which is very helpful i mean in the sense wherein the customer needs to do minimal data entry wherein he trans transitions from one stage to another in a smoothless manner and then probably for an underwriter it might be a different interface it's the interface which consolidates information which shows him you know details not just coming in from a proposal form but even from other sources so that is where you know 
depicting the solution in different ways the same very solution in diff different ways to diff diff different stakeholders actually would require you know a quick form building quick interface development um, and, and that is where the solution comes handy then we have the rule engine which is obviously you know uh, helping uh, develop or, or or configure a lot of business rules and validations you know uh, facilities like aml uh, you know conditions like blacklisting deduping underwriting all of them requires a lot of guidelines to be imported inside the system and that is where instead of getting them imported it is actually getting them configured which is which is making the uh, the actual difference here uh, process modeling obviously yes uh, the process needs to be uh, designed in a seamless manner it has to be fast it has to be you know adaptable to change because as i said you know there would be changes going forward as and when organizations tend to mature more and more on on the digital customer onboarding uh, side we have the content management as as sachin also mentioned you know one of the key aspects here is how do you ensure that the documents are absorbed presented in a manner which is legit uh, which is you know uh, which is readable which is which is consistent and that is where the content management services of the solution would really help social adapters i mean that is again very critical because nowadays you know especially with millennials uh, you know uh, depending so much on social media platform the tools should be you know social adaptable i mean it should connect to various types of social media platforms you know it should actually you know uh, interface with them to ensure that any sort of an inquiry with somebody posts on let's say a, a facebook page gets transformed into an actual lead inside the solution especially you know in the servicing aspect it becomes very critical uh, then the communication management is again very critical because as i said uh, from a end to end seamless onboarding point uh, journey standpoint it is very critical that the customers and you know any stakeholder who is involved is well informed of what is happening uh, for a customer onboarding journey mobility obviously that plays a key role uh, reporting that is again very critical rpa you know you know uh, again from an automation standpoint uh, to automate applications or to integrate applications which are traditionally difficult to integrate that that tools comes in very handy so this is more in terms of technology now probably if we have to look at it uh, with some examples i think that makes the the uh, the entire uh, presentation much more relatable as to how these set of tools and technology that we've been talking about is actually uh, you know uh, would actually be transforming uh, the onboarding journey and that is where we have just created a small storyboard to help us explain that now let me just quickly uh, take you through a storyboard so uh, the main character here uh, in our presentation is Katie. She is a millennial. Uh, you know, probably like most of the millennials, she is tech savvy. She's smart. She knows technology, and and she's been onto the web for most of the activities which uh, she required to do. And obviously, you know, insurance uh, being one of the things which uh, she uh, wants to uh, purchase, she has searched for it. But then, you know, uh, she has always had this perception that this is something which is complex, which is something which is difficult for her to buy independently without uh, requiring any external help and that is where you know probably she would have uh, searched for it online she would have inquired for it online but when it came to actual purchase she has been sort of slightly resist uh, you know uh, uh, sort of resistant uh, or hesit uh, hesitating to actually complete that and that is where you know if an organization is able to convert a customer like kt uh, that is what is going to give them the competitive edge because it is not just you know an individual or a, or a class of customer that uh, they have been successfully on board or they can successfully on board without any uh, external uh, human intervention but then you know this group would also act as an influencer which can actually you know uh, uh, have a very strong publicity for an insurance company it can actually uh, help them sort of uh, Sell it across not just to use this user group but you know to other user groups as well uh, so you know probably uh, how it typically would happen you know as i said you know katie is some uh, katie is an individual uh, who's tech savvy she searched and evaluates an insurance plan on the web and now let's say if if she gets an option on the website itself of the insurance company which can help her connect to the agent immediately uh, that is something which actually takes this journey to the next level of the actual sale being happening now this is where the point of disconnect normally comes now here typically what would happen is probably in a, in a conventional scenario uh, you know katie would just drop a query on the website and somebody would let's say connect back to her three days four days or five days later by the time probably she would have lost her interest 
or probably she would be busy in uh, something other more critical to her and that is where if she can connect on the very page itself to an agent first by the by by let's say just a click of a button that actually traces this journey to the next level now let's assume the the agent connects to kt you know probably there is a facility wherein they can even video conference you know she she asks you know about a particular plan the agent can the agent can illustrate the benefits by you know let's say generating a small bi then and there and sharing the screen which actually helps kt understand that what are the uh, you know benefits that the plan offers and whether it relates to the requirement that she's been looking at now this is something which would actually help her decide at this point itself whether she needs to take this policy or probably she needs to search for another plan and in this in this communication on this in this uh, same very uh, instance the agent can also propose based on her or his you know a reading of kt's requirement what are the other options available which probably kt might not be aware about uh, you know in terms of what are the other type of benefits and plans that the same insurance company is offering so this is where you know once uh, they agree on a plan the agent can actually help kt fill up the proposal form then and there you know either by helping her open a link or probably sharing his own screen with with her wherein you know she she can fill along with the agent an application form which we are typically calling it as an assistive form filling and and probably you know upload the documents on the same very page through a link now you know probably uh, once the 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 data entry of the proposal form is done jointly by the agent and kt uh, they can even generate a proposal a pdf they can e sign it you know through the various types of e signing facilities which are available you know a uh, a uh, uh, real time due diligence of the data which kt has entered uh, can be done by the system in terms of ensuring that you know there is no blacklisting there is no negatives you know probably there is no aml possibility uh, they can even do a ekyc you know uh, by by let's say uh, a small procedure uh, wherein they can uh, the kt can hold the documents in front of her face and and probably they can uh, she can open the 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 camera of the of the laptop or the mobile and and capture the details and that is where you know um, and once this is done uh, again the agent through the same call can validate the information generate or show the the consolidated proposal form takes kt's conference record his acceptance and push the data or probably provide her a link to make the payments and and once that is done you know uh, the the upload uh, the documents are taken the photograph is taken the payments are done and then you know uh, with all these technologies uh, the 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 onboarding journey gets triggered immediately so you know the system can immediately identify you know because kt is is a young individual with no medical history you know probably the type of uh, benefits that she's looking at these are uh, risk free and you know an instant policy issuance on an onboarding kit gets generated and it gets shared real time to kt in her mailbox now this is what uh, you know makes makes uh, the entire process much smooth and much more seamless and and that is where the conversion rates of actually you know not just inquiring about the policy online but even purchasing it would you know see a huge amount of shift but then obviously you know this is this is this is what we call it as a straight through path wherein everything is happening uh, you know in in a, in a straight away fashion but you know most of the applications might not go this way there may be multiple types of requirements multiple type of people uh, and 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 then there might be a possibility wherein this process may not be as smooth you know not because of the fact that the system is not allowing it but because of the fact that there might that there might be complexity in the data of the customer or probably there might be certain uh, you know challenges in the product uh, that she is selecting which might require a tweaking a tweaking of this process so that is where or probably it is not just even that you know you know probably uh, kt would have got distracted because of let's say certain other engagements and and that is where her onboarding journey would have stopped in between you know probably because of certain other compulsion but then how do we ensure that you know whenever kt connects back so one is how do you reach back to her to tell her that probably she is having a request which is in wait which is something which which needs to be completed and then whenever she connects back how does it ensures that uh you know how does the system ensures that she starts from the same very level where she has left now this is again one of the key uh abandonment reasons for any customer is because you know probably let's say if i am filling a form digitally and if i have filled you know 20 30 uh, field details and then let's assume if i have closed the form because of any reason 
no probably the application goes away there is no, no no mechanism to retrieve what i have already entered and and, and people have to start entering it uh, all over all over again which which actually makes them you know abandon the proposal and probably look at some of the other uh, insurance companies now there is something which is actually overcoming their problem so let's assume the at the point when kt you know sort of resumes the form filling she gets uh, to see or she enters the stage at the same very level where she has left now this you know one it helps her recollect what she has been looking at and then also you know she she is happy in the fact that you know probably she does not have to do the process all over all over again for the things that she has already done you know probably it can be the same you know uh, the, the the other thing happens the same way uh, and once she she fills up the application now there is a possibility that the underwriting rule engine may not classify it as as a straight through case this time you know probably there is a certain uh, reason probably let's say there are certain lifestyle uh, you know questions which have been answered by kt in such a way that the insurance companies might consider the the risk to be slightly higher and and you know probably wants the application to be evaluated before sharing the policy with with kt and that is where the underwriting would come into picture now you know a typical uh, way of underwriting to happen would be you know this application would go back to the underwriter's desk you know probably uh, he'll see the application form he'll he'll ask for certain things uh, additionally uh, the agent uh, would be communicated over an email the agent then calls up uh, the customer and this entire process becomes much more you know uh, uh, you know complex and very lengthy and that is where again the interest of the customer drops so this is where you know if it can be much more smooth wherein once the application is submitted by the kt immediately you know if it is identified to be a non straight through case it gets into the bucket of an underwriter and the underwriter sees a consolidated history of the case not just on the information which kt has provided but from multiple sources which might be relevant from an underwriting standpoint and that is where the, the system is even assisting the underwriter to decide what has to happen to a case wherein you know the system might say that you know probably this is this is the case wherein these are the three medicals that needs to be collected or these are the two non medical documents that needs to be collected from the customer so that is where the underwriter's turnaround time also is reduced hugely and and you know probably uh, you know if it is a medical the system can itself based on the location of kt identify the nearest possible tpa who is actually getting that uh, you know test conducted look at the load of the tpa i know immediately transfer the case to the tp and inform the, uh, the 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 customer of you know uh, the requirement that probably this is the tpa that would be visiting uh, her shortly and collecting the medicals from her now once this is done even the way the medical data needs to flow back to the underwriters needs to be much more digital because this is again one of the key bottlenecks that is there in especially when it comes to life and medical insurance because you know uh in a normal scenario these medicals comes typically in the form of reports which then the underwriter looks at takes his own you know intuitive decision and decide what has to happen now assuming a scenario wherein the data which has been you know in in uh, collected by the tpa can move through digitally it can execute through a set of rules and instead of just showing the reports show the outputs to the underwriter so probably you know if there is a negative medical it can immediately you know highlight the possibility of a specific scenario to the underwriter and tell him or assist him with the possible decision which can be let's say sending across a counter offer because you know probably <coughs> the system says that based on the medical output you know you know this is this is something which is a high risk and hence you know probably we need to reduce the sum assured that has been uh, offered to the customer and that is where you know the customer uh, immediately kt gets back the details she looks at the counter offer decides on accepting it she can again immediately call up the uh, you know the call center through the video link facility understand what is the counter offer and then give the acceptance real time by again digitally signing the counter offer letter now once this is done immediately it comes back and obviously it can uh, get all the uh, the documents real time uh, for example the revised benefit illustration and and any other type of requirement which underwriter has asked so not just uh, she can sign the counter offer but she can also upload any additional document and and that is where immediately the information comes back to the underwriter the system tells the underwriter that this is a case which is now good for issuance and and the policy gets issued without you know any human intervention or with the least of human intervention and that is where you know she becomes the kt becomes not just a customer but also a influencer in her group now 
though this entire journey is uh, is uh, you know taking into account the, the fact that most of the customers are, are tech savvy and 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 they would be always on the internet uh, to do this uh, things but then you know a digital customer onboarding not just caters to such scenario but also the scenario wherein you know a customer visits the branch because that is also one of the key uh, uh, you know sourcing channels now not just the bank it can be the bank uh, the branch branch you know which is actually helping us as a banker partner uh, for for uh, insurance company now even in those scenarios how do you actually make this journey much more smooth or seamless is again one of the key objectives of a digital customer onboarding and that is where you know probably let's again try to understand it from an example wherein let's assume now Katie meets uh, you know her friend Rebecca and now she's an influencer for the insurance company she she tells her that you know probably this is an insurance that she's been able to purchase smooth uh, you know in a smoothless manner and that is where now now let's assume Rebecca has gone to a bank because of any financial uh, reasons and because she was aware of of uh, uh, the benefits that Katie has highlighted to her she also inquired with the bank officials that whether there is something that she can also do in this regard and that is where the bank executive who is present in the bank can you know immediately come to her through a mobile device explain the benefits to rebecca that you know probably if you group your current loan application with a, a, a let's say a financial saver plan how does it actually helps you reduce the risk of the liability that you've been taking and this is where again uh, even rebecca uh, you know uh, she she can actually look at it she can understand and immediately she can give her acceptance to buy that particular policy so the banker assurance uh, representative can use his digital device to immediately start on the journey fill up the e proposal you know get the documents clicked from the mobile device you know uh, uh, take the e signature of rebecca and submit it uh, you know uh, for evaluation and again you know in a similar manner as soon as the evaluation is done automatically by the system the policy can be generated and it can be sent across to rebecca you know real time uh, as a link on an sms as an email or on a whatsapp group so you know <clears throat> so that is where uh, and even even you know probably a, a final uh, policy doc can be mailed across at a later point of time to rebecca so in general what i've been trying to highlight i'll just try to cover it in a single slide here so obviously you know you we need to have as part of the journey not just the front ends, which obviously is the first part of the solution, which is the customer, the agent portal, the mobile apps, wherein I know uh, the omni-channel applications can be initiated, benefit illustrations can be generated and explained to the customers, e-application can be filled, due diligence can be done through system-based uh, controls. The second part of it is more back-end focus, wherein once this journey from the front end gets complete, how does it seamlessly transforms to the back end? How the data is passed seamlessly how do the back-end evaluation is made much more simpler and and you know a much more seamless through uh, you know uh, consolidated underwriting workflows you know facilities to uh, refer cases not through emails but through the system itself and then as part of this entire onboard uh, uh, you know onboarding journey what are the digital enablers which are available in the solution so you know you have facilities like live chatting you have facilities like video conferencing call center integration ekyc document upload facility e-payments now these are the enablers which can actually gel or sit on top of the front-end portals mobile app and you know the entire back-end workflow to make the entire digital onboarding journey actually digital and and that is where uh, you know so that is where the difference comes because right now the focus on digital has always been on the front end but it is not just as i mentioned about acquiring customer data but to digitally transform the entire cycle of issuing the policy to the customer which makes the difference so with this you know i have sort of uh, completed with my set of slides uh, i hope it was uh, you know of some help i i may not want to you know uh, open this discussion for any questions or any queries Thank you, Shantanu. I think you're correct in mentioning that digital was always on the foray. I think COVID just kind of expedited it. Most of the processes that we saw in insurance or probably any other conventional industry was around where people file and the customers were present at the same location. So if they coexisted, co-located, 
then everything worked seamlessly and there was no issue in doing anything or any of those sorts so i think it was really informative in that sense thank you shantanu there are a few questions that i'd like to put up to the gentleman uh, the first one being shantanu for you that probably we hear a lot of things around in this especially in these times around uh maybe doing things really really quick which basically means that community developers have started to flourish and there's a concept of low code no code that is being kind of developed into various lobs back end automations and things like that so where do you think these exist and how do you think we can go about handling those yes so i think uh, you're right in the sense that uh, there has been so much emphasis on uh, low code uh, no code that you know probably you have a lot of solutions and bits and pieces which are available you know in the market uh, you have a lot of uh, you know community uh, developers who are actually providing offerings fintechs are providing offerings uh, you know around that so uh, but you know one of the key uh, aspects here is when we look at it uh, you know from a from a digital or from a low code perspective is now one is automating or or you know uh, sort of uh, transforming one of the pieces of this entire journey which is again important it is something that you need to do you know probably there might be a specific pain area which is very critical at a particular point of time and that is where you know uh, organizations are looking at to solve that particular problem area first but then as i mentioned uh, you know things like onboarding or or probably you know things like servicing are not just you know uh, one of the things or probably uh, you know it does not it has a lot of things which needs to be looked at and that is where the seamlessness of the entire journey becomes very critical so while organizations automate a critical task uh, which is the problem in hand they also are looking at you know solutions which is helping gel all these pieces together and and providing them as part of one single workbench or one single platform which can actually transform uh, you know the entire journey so which is uh, uh, sort of leveraging any such piece of technology which is available without actually the need to redo it all over again but at the same time ensuring that is it is connected well throughout the journey uh, with the platform so as to ensure that uh, you know the end to end automation in a seamless manner is achieved thank you shantanu sachin um what do you think is a good time or a time frame for launching a product or probably go to market for a new product to be there especially in the insurance segment and how has covid impacted it yeah this is a bit tricky question yeah i mean products uh, if you see it depends uh, so product journey if you look at the whole journey of insurance is uh, conceptualizing the idea working out the pricing looking at the feature functionality and then obviously taking a regulatory approval and i think some countries it is in fact every country it is different right and in fact many of the countries have encouraged the digital products so the cycle has become smaller and uh, some of the countries have also set up the insurance sandboxes so people can launch i think first maybe two months or something they are giving time that you can launch the product without the formal approvals if you product, product is successful and if it is accepted by the people then approval formal approval process can follow so with this with sandboxes coming in and with sachet products coming in i think the product development and launch cycle has become much shorter it could be couple of weeks traditionally obviously insurance products have taken up to 6 months also to build and design and configure uh, but with the digital uh, tech, technology being there as well as the uh, you know sandbox being there to for experiment i think it's been a much shorter yeah so we are talking of maybe couple of weeks is something which is uh, uh, something which can be done in many of the countries and i guess that is the future of insurance and we going forward yeah so such in there is also an element of rural insurance or probably like you have uh, unbanked population to be on boarded there's a lot right. of rural population that exists especially in the apac india market as such how do we address those in the digital technology age yeah 
I think that's very, very relevant question uh, because the whole, except few geographies, I think the whole of Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia has a quite a bit of agri-based rural economy. So there are some models which are getting prevalent uh, in this space, uh, micro insurance space. Obviously, the insurance purpose is different for different reasons. Uh, some of the insurance is uh, for crop, uh, agriculture insurance, some of the insurance is for the uh, livelihood of the people. And uh, so, uh, and also it could be cattle insurance, it could be anything which is related to uh, livelihood of people and around their uh, you know, work, etc. So I think there are various ways so companies have created channels. So the business correspondent channels of the banking uh, community typically also uh, works as an insurance uh, add-on community. Uh, also many lending companies have attached the insurance. Uh, so that's called credit protect or those kind of things. So if any, or microfinance companies are also selling insurance. So basically, uh, so see, because insurance selling is a extensive uh, proposition directly for the sake of insurance and insurance is not a product you buy every day. So naturally the penetration is still low and I think cost of acquisition of customers is a bit high. Uh, but uh, till the digital gets adopted in the rural and agri population a lot more, selling through physical means would be still a expensive phenomena. So banka like say a lot of cooperative banks or the rural banks uh, uh, are the key or post office schemes in certain countries. So postal insurance. So these are the ways people are uh, uh, getting uh, insurance penetrated. In some of the countries, uh, you also see government having a very low cost uh, insurance products, which are uh, which can be sold by you know even even uh, grocery stores or which can be sold by even medical stores. So those are also coming. So I would say it's it's a really great time for insurance penetration. I think most of the Asian community has a very low insurance penetration, and I think micro insurance is the way to go. But yes, it can be classified in six seven different categories and and different uh, channels can be adopted for that. Perfect. Now, I think that's one of the main areas that will kind of propel insurance in the coming times. Um, Shantanu, do you see existing offerings or terminologies or probably uh, the products that are there existing in the market today from an insurance perspective? Would it see a change of what is being offered as a product and how it's being offered? And what would be the challenges for migration? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, the current situation would require insurance companies to sort of relook at their product portfolio. They they might be you know uh, trying to bring in certain factors which were uh, never considered in the past because you know the situation that we have right now as, is is something which which happens once in a century. So you know probably uh, the the companies were not actually uh, prepared in terms of having the products in hand or ready before that. But then, yes, uh, there would be uh, also opportunities for the insurance companies to design products which would have a lot of pull in the market now. So, you know, while a lot of the product may not be applicable, but then there might be, uh, you know, scenarios wherein uh, some of the new products can actually get a lot of push in the market. And that is where uh, I think uh, one of the key challenges for any insurance companies would be you know uh, how do how do they actually get on these products uh, you know um, into the market in a very uh, low amount of time or really quickly and that is where you know uh, the struggle actually happens because you know in the traditional mechanism as such as been mentioning you know typically it takes around you know six to uh, you know seven months for a product uh, to come into the market which is which is the time when it actually starts losing its relevance also because you know many a times a product is being device based on the current market needs as is the case right now but then you know when it actually comes to the market uh, the opportunity has already gone by and that is where uh, you know one is designing new products but then having mechanisms in place through which the product can actually go to the market very fast in in, in uh, you know a lesser amount of time and i think that is something uh, which would see a major shift in the strategies for insurance companies perfect now i understand and how relevant, Shantanu, are the VKYC, EKYC? I think that can be a question that can be taken from a technology perspective as well as from a consulting perspective by both of you. As to how relevant are these technologies? Because you see a lot of frauds happening on the document perspective, a lot of frauds happening on the person's identity perspective. So 
Sachin did touch upon the security aspect of things, but is is this technology relevant? Would it stay in times to come, or is it just a one-off in case of COVID? So probably so, both take this question. Yeah. So I'll just uh, you know probably uh, uh, have it from a technology side. So obviously you know this is something uh, which uh, has been gaining a lot of prominence of late because of the of the current market situation, but you know, this is something which becomes a key aspect uh, of ensuring uh, a, a smooth or a, or a touchless uh, onboarding journey. But then the point is really valid that how do we ensure that you know with all these facilities in place, uh, the 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 data is uh, evaluated thoroughly to ensure that there are no frauds. You know, uh, there is no data related issues. It's not just always about uh, uh, you know uh, fraud. It can also result in in certain compliances issues where the data is not collected in the right manner and later on you know it, it has issues with, with with the regulator so that is where i think Sachin has also emphasized in terms of not just having a facility to have a video call in place uh, but then there ought to be technological supplements to it which makes this thing much more seamless you know things like facial recognition voice recognition you know uh, things like uh, you know uh, uh, sentiment analysis so those are those are things which needs to be augmented into these tools and technologies to ensure that it, it is uh, done in the right manner and that is where i think uh, going forward a lot of data analytics is also uh, uh, you know uh, would be critical in further ensuring the consistency of the data data so it is not just about you know getting these information from customers but then also evaluating you know it against the data that you already have you know and that is where uh, uh, you know the, the the entire outcomes can be much more uh, risk free or much more thoroughly evaluated, I would say. Makes sense. Sachin? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, well covered by Vishantanu anyway. So just to add uh, the point of fraud, I think uh, insurance frauds have been uh, there for ages. I mean, you know, uh, there are people who are there to make quick money. There are people who are um, falsifying their information. So even in physical world, uh, it has not been a fraud free. I mean, there is a strong fraud detection and compliance team uh, which is always there and even fraud are not limited to customers frauds are also insurance are done by a lot of channel uh, partners or even the sales teams also uh, because in the pressure of getting customer acquisition or incentives etc so i think i would say that uh, uh, you know managing employees or managing partners is an equally big problem not only managing the technology and I would say technology, what Shantanu also talked about, utilizing some of those additional, advanced, you know, advanced tools uh, will be able to bring down uh, fraud cases much lesser than what they would be in the manual case. Because uh, you, I mean, there are various innovative ways. Um, I have worked on some certain initiatives that group a group of insurance companies can come together. Uh, they can form some kind of a consortia, or they could have an insurance bureau, and. Uh, they could share the data of uh, you know the, the agency frauds they could share customer fraud data and once this kyc is happening or deduplication can be done uh, at that point of time itself and you are when you, whether you are onboarding a, a channel partner or an agent or you are onboarding a customer uh, you would be able to utilize a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to be able to in with a few milliseconds or a second you will be able to understand that this uh, this uh, looks suspicious uh, uh, for the data being provided because manually what we check is probably data fields maybe we'll check you know 20 fields but system can check even 200 fields 400 fields 700 fields so i think uh, what we have seen a lot of lot more reduction in the frauds by using advanced technologies but they have to be appropriately configured and they have to be uh, you know properly implemented uh, only uh, doing a video won't work i mean there is a lot more goes into a video kyc and that's very important Perfect. Thank you. I think we've just run out of time. And uh, thank you for attending the webinar today for the audience. And thank you, Sachin. Thank you, Shantanu, for such an insightful presentation today. This was really helpful, and I'm sure the customers would benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon to all of you. Have a good day and look forward to connect with you. Uh, please, please feel free to ping me on my uh, LinkedIn, uh, Sachin R. Said, and uh, otherwise all through uh, Nugen team, whichever way, and I'll be happy to connect with all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.